Hey y'all, what's happening? We're live <laughs> with Michael Cray. Hi. At Let's Make Art. We got some friends here. Let's see, let me get my phone over here so I can see. I'm so excited. Hi, Virginia, Jerry, Susan, Kimberly, Cassie, Jess, Rachel, Sharon, hi Sharon. Some familiar faces. Thanks for joining. Uh, what time is it? Are we? Oh, it's 12, exactly. Okay, so I have some fun things I've been playing around with, just these tags with our materials that um, came in our box. And then I got, you know, some other sub additional supplies that I thought y'all might have a fun time um, thinking about seeing if you want to add more inks to your collection of supplies and things like that. Um, yeah, and I'm available for some questions if y'all have questions. Um, Cause this whole process is, is really new to a lot of our friends here and it's not super intimidating, I don't think, but um, there's some tricks that we can talk about if we need to do that. Um, and yeah. Hey y'all. Whoa, uh -oh. I got sound over here. It's like delayed. There's Isn't a that huge funny? delay from <laughs> the recording. It's about a minute. So we're living in the future to all yeah. these people who are watching this about a minute ahead. Mm -hmm. We're in the future. I like yeah. that. Yeah. We're from the future, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a, a great name for a band if anybody wants to steal that. That was my husband's idea, not mine. Yeah. We're from the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I thought I would talk about a couple of different things. And, you know, if this turns into a completely different conversation, then that's fine too. Because I just thought it would be fun to hang out and make art and see what happens. Um, so first thing that I like to do when I'm about to create something is take a deep breath. Y'all know that, right? So let's all take a deep breath. And like roll your shoulders, you know, if that feels right for you. I just like to be like aware of the tension in my body and just try to let it go because this is my time to have fun and make art and be in the moment and be with y'all. And taking that deep breath helps me too. Helps me just like settle in. So. Okay, now that we got a deep breath, um, we can get started. Right. So, here we go. Some of the supplies that I'm gonna reach for today, if you want to go run and grab things, if you don't already have them around, are the supplies that came in the Good Vibes box. So, any of the stamps that you created, I got some new stamps I'm gonna show you that I carved too. And let's see. So, your brayer. And if you've not, you haven't got the box and you're just joining us and you're curious about what's happening this brayer came with our course and this ink plate it's clear i don't know if you can see it um so we're going to use that to spread our ink on and we are going to use some stamps that we already made and like this guy and we're going to use some of the speedball ink i'm going to grab um the yellow and the blue and i'm going to show y'all how i like to mix right on my ink plate and I'm gonna use white probably, but you can just grab whatever you have close by. I'm going to have some of the collage paper that I designed close by for some layering. I've got my handy dandy Yes Paste um, for glue. I'm going to have some Posca pins close by for some little details, adding the Some of the pages that we made in the, um, in the course, if you're curious, and this is your first time kind of checking it out. This one. Now this one is made with this. This one is a different process where we um, do like a one drawing monotype, which is kind of a fun thing. And then we also did this one on a separate sheet. So I think it's fun to work on separate papers so that um, we can just have the permission to play and see where it goes and less stress of like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna ruin my page. You know, so I think the tags are kind of a fun thing to add to our journal pages that way or to use for other things. So I like that because then we can just create with reckless abandon. Okay, let's see, am I missing anything down here? Okay, our sound's good now, right? Should be, yeah. It just was off. Until. Okay, Cassie was asking about that. Thanks, Cassie. There we go. Yes, the early days of Let's Make Art, there was a live every week. Yeah. I think lives are fun. 
We have a friend from St. Joe. Hi, Elaine. That's exciting. You have a great pizza place there. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's It'll like where yeah. I want to go for my birthday every year. I just want to so go there. Good. It is a beautiful day, Karen. Where are you? Katie says, hi, Jesse and Michael. Hi, Katie. Krasinski, she's cool. I like Katie. We oh, like yeah, all Katie. of our friends here. Oh, Katie. Oh, we have a Tammy from Connecticut. Awesome. Okay, so what should we do first? Should we do paint mixing? Should we that do a little bit great. of that? A little Let's bit of paint, paint mixing. Yeah. All right, Let's do it. Karen's from Colorado. So nice. it's nice weather in Colorado. All right, I'm gonna bring this over here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna do a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow. I might need more than that, we'll see. And a touch of black. Oh, where did I put black? Let me grab that really fast. Uh-oh. Scooching. Ran away. I'm back. <laughs> so, I'm usually already printing with black, um, and then I'm going for other colors, so we'll see how this goes. All right. So I'm gonna use my brayer and I'm just gonna, well, I like kind of mixing this a little bit first and then bringing in a touch of that black. So I kind of like the idea of trying to get a, a green color that's close to what was in our collage paper because then it kind of matches and you can do things on those spreads like that. I'm gonna need more, 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 more. A little more blue. Well, I, usually if you're going for a light green, you need more yellow than blue. You yeah, know. And last time I got this green, I already had a little black on my brayer and I was lazy and I didn't go clean it. Mm -hmm which I'm totally fine with. Cause I'm never like trying to be super precise. I'm just kind of in the moment and having a good time. All right. So, you know, if you still have a little bit remnant of black, even after you wash your brayer, it'll just darken your green a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up this green now that I've got a good color. And I'm okay with it being a little, um, like variegated, var having a little variation of color. What's the word for that, Michael? Variegated? Yeah. That's, it varied, or is that it's just a plant. in plants? Okay. Varied. Varied. Yes. A little okay. varied. Okay. So I'm gonna put this down. What should we print? Good vibes. Where's my yeah, good vibes? Yeah. Do good vibes. Here we go. Let's start it off right with some good vibes. Okay. So I'm just gonna lay my paint or ink down right on there. So we got a different color besides black because we're doing a lot of black, which I love black of the contrast, but these other colors, you know, are fun, and you know, might not occur to you to mix them because they just come in those tubes, the colors they are, but we can mix them. Okay, let's see, let's go for... Could I'm you do the same this. stamp in two colors and have it be like a shadow? Oh my gosh, yeah, That'd we totally cool. could do that. I'm just gonna put this guy um, like right here at the bottom. And I have so many things on my desk already, I don't know what I did with my cool stone that I like to use to burnish. But that's okay. Our hands are good too. Good, good tools. It'll show up when we're not looking for it. Of course, like everything. Yeah. I like being in here because at least my stuff is limited to the desk. Oh, I see it. There it is. In my studio, it's like, it could be anywhere. I'm being a little excessive on this burnishing, but I just want to make sure that we get a good, nice image. We could probably never line it up again, right? If you if you look and it's not done. Oh yeah, that looks good. So fresh and so green. I like it. So yeah, play around with colors. That's fun. And when you have a little extra paint and you're like done printing, you know, it doesn't have to just get washed down the drain. You can um, just scrape it off and use it. And that's how I got this background right here. I just 
smushed it on there. Love it. So, and it's water soluble, remember? So you can go and add water and get it to move around too that way. I just love playing around in paint. Like it's just so relaxing. Yeah, therapeutic. Oh, Maria said variegated could be anything. Thanks, Maria. It's that time of year. I had to get some uh, allergy medication because Missouri is starting to bloom everywhere. Seriously, I don't know if those white trees smell good to you, but they don't smell very good to me. <laughs> and I'm allergic to them, so I have this whole association with them. That's like, when I got home from, I, I went on a little, little weekend trip, and I came back, and my tree out front was blooming. And I was like, why does this smell like shrimp? Like, it's <laughs> such smell a like weird... Shrimp. Well, just that first day, and then they started smelling a little bit different, but I was like, this is the weirdest thing. And Lois was just holding her nose, my daughter, and was like, I think it's that tree. <laughs> it just smelled funny. I'm going to have to go smell the trees and imagine a nice shrimp scampi as I smell them. It wasn't like cooked shrimp. It was like raw shrimp. Yeah, that's even <laughs> worse. Sorry, I'm ruining this for you guys. Okay, so this is kind of pretty just on its own, and we didn't waste, you know, our paint there. Now let's get... You know, you can, you can get a little crazy and add some water and bleed it out if you want. Or if you like that contrast, you can leave it alone. I kind of like the contrast. I might just have it do its thing here. Sorry, I'm working at the bottom and I wasn't showing you. That looks so cool. Hello from Massachusetts, Mary. Hi. I used to go to Massachusetts in the summer to see my Nana in Newburyport. What part of Massachusetts are you from, Mary? I feel like knowing this. Okay, I'm already calmer because I touched paint. Isn't that funny? Oh, it just feels good. Okay, so we'll let this dry or we'll just hit it with that dry really fast. Oh, I got some cords under my chair. <laughs> I rolled over it. Here we go. All right. So we'll print over this one. Maybe I'll demo this white flower on top of this one. Because we're, we're growing with the flow. Grow with the flow. Now when I'm drying stuff, I like to make sure it's upright so the air can move through the paper and not just down on the surface. I feel like that helps it dry faster. And sometimes I hit the other side because it kind of straightens it out. Uh, someone named Shelly asked, if you could have just used the brayer to put the paint on the tag. Yes, and I'll do that too. I'll demo that too. You were so right. Well, I still got paint on my brayer. Let's do it. Sweet. Let's, I have some on here. Let's just see if I have enough left. It might be too dry. I might have waited too long, Mary. Oh, no. It's kind of lighter because it's kind of dry, and I think that looks cool. Push your paper up a little bit. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah, so that's kind of a fun background to work with. Thanks for that, Jelly. Mm -hmm. yes. They like your new chair. Oh. <laughs> this was out there and yeah. got moved in here. Okay, so we got that going on. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do next? Oh, maybe we'll do some white. The same person who asked about the brayer, her name's Shelly. She said Newburyport is awesome. Her brother-in-law and his family live there. Yeah, it was. Small world. Yeah, it is a small world. I love when we make those connections. Let's see what I want to do next. I think I want to do, okay, so I'm going to bring a brush brayer because I'm not going to wash stuff. I'm not going to leave y'all and go wash stuff. So I got multiple brayers. Sorry if you only have one brayer and you have to wash it in between. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do white and I brought another plate too. So I'll put this over there. And this is just straight white. And it, this comes in the bigger size, the 2.5 or the 1.25. I just use white a lot. Um, kind of like black, I use black a lot. So I like having the bigger container, but 
it's all good, whatever you can get. You probably mix it in with all the other colors for different shades and stuff. Right? Exactly. Thank you for saying that. Totally true. I love that sound. You know it's ready when you get that sound because it's the tack and the viscosity are just perfect. Okay, let's see. So sometimes if there's a little bit of ink left over in the background, it'll, a little, it'll mix a little with what's there. I'm okay with that. But just know that if your vinyl cut stamp, whatever you want to call it, has remnants of ink, that something might, something might happen. Gonna put this kind of right. I'm just gonna go for it. I don't know why I'm whispering. It's if a, I it yell, helps, it might not work out. It helps the effect. You gotta be <laughs> tender about it. Yes. We're being so gentle with our supplies. We're not yelling at them. We're just coaxing the goodness out, right? <clears throat> I don't know what these words mean, but you might. Someone named Kimberly asked if you think mixing Vicky Boutin pigments with the ink would work. Vicky Boutin, what? Vicky Boutin pigments. Pigments. With the ink would work. I haven't tried that, but we did use Vicky Boutin uh, pigments in a previous art journal thing. And you can use pigments with different things. So you can add it to watercolor, Arabic, gum Arabic, whatever. Yeah. Is that what? Um, and different mediums. So I think that would be worth experimenting with if you've got it sitting around and you want to try it. Yeah, because then you could add maybe the little pigment to this white and see what happens. You like I was trying to sound fancy and say Vicky Boutine? It's okay. It I liked it. sounds fancier. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know that store, Bucky's that everybody likes to go to? Yeah. With the, this with is not sponsored. Well, my brother is, <laughs> this is not from sponsored. Louisiana. <laughs> And everything in Louisiana is said a little bit different. You know, that's why I love the long out because I used to live in South Louisiana. So he comes to visit me in Missouri with this new hat on. And I was like, oh, Boochies, what's that? Because <laughs> that's how <laughs> Bucky's would be said in Louisiana. He laughed so hard, he cried. Like he had tears in his eyes. I was like, what? And he was like, it's Bucky's. And I was like, oh, I just, the one time I could have got a Louisiana. Boochies. <laughs> but it's stuck in my brain, y'all. I just kept rubbing this because I'm talking. I got to stop. Um, every time I see that sign, I think Boochies, um, and not Bucky's. So funny. So this is a little bit lighter. I, w I don't know, but I like it. Yeah, that's really cool. I like it. It's like, it's gonna be a good background instead of a focal point. Um, yeah, I think it's probably lighter because my white re constituted the green because it wasn't dry all the way. Just so you know, if you wanted an explanation on why it turns out that way, but if I dry this one a little bit more, maybe we'll get it brighter. Let's let's experiment. I'm down with experimenting live. You never know what you're gonna get. I'm still giggling about boo cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you can get everything in boo cheese or Bucky's. Like it's like a big old if you don't know this, it's like a big old gas station. It's like it's a Walmart like gas station. A super Walmart yeah. gas station basically. It's like everything in there. I really want to go to one. When just I, cause. When I was younger, I loved gas station food. Now that I'm older, I just can't do it. Oh, you don't want the nachos at three o'clock in the morning anymore? Or just like those weird taquito rolls that have been on the roller for a long time. That used to sound good to me, like actively sound good. I like that you brought the snack element into the live already. It's, it's about lunchtime. You know, we uh, end up talking about food a lot. Uh, I know we don't have Keenan with us right now. He would be talking about food, so I'm, I'm glad you're bringing that, bringing us back around. And I just saw somebody's talking about donuts, and I gotta, yeah. I gotta see what I'm missing on the donut front. What what's happening over here? <laughs> Marcy said, "I know, I know. I shouldn't type and drive. I'm just too happy to see you." So I all grabbed a. Horton's donut, and then everybody wants to know she got enough for everybody here. I remember they're talking Horton's about donuts. Canadian and Tim Hortons. Am I thinking the right thing? Maybe. Like, hold on. There's more in the comment, but I can't see it. It's vanilla cream. That sounds good. I'm gonna get. I don't know that there's a place here I can get a donut. Old Casey's gas station. Do they have donuts? Yeah, they're not. Like, you know, temporary temporary expectations. 
temper your expectations. I live in Missouri, uh, done. Before we moved here, um, a friend took us on a tour of all the best places to eat, and it was Casey's gas station and the subway. <laughs> I know, real impressive. Well, I landed in Kansas City and they took me for barbecue, so I was like, oh yeah, there we That's go. That's good. That's good stuff. That was my first experience was barbecue, and I was like, yeah, this is going to be good. Because I grew up eating barbecue, and then I moved to Utah, and there's no good barbecue there. I, that's a lie. I mean, eventually I found the places, but not prevalent. And it's different. It's different barbecue. Different places have different style, you know? Let's see if this... Sorry, talking and making this while we're hanging out is a little different than me actually concentrating. Yeah, see? That's more white because this was more dry. Cool. I don't know what that little line is, but I think it's cool. Okay, so there's... There's white. Now, let me show you some other things that I did. I used the brayer when I had black ink and I did a little pass of black on there. And then I put my stamp over this. And so if you're working on these little tags and you're like, um, all of the stamps I made are giant, <laughs> that's not gonna work out for me. You can think about which ones um, cropped would look like. And that's kind of fun to play around with scale and yeah. cropping it in a different way and getting different designs, which is just cool because you're able to reproduce your design so quickly when you have a stamp. So that's an idea. Let's see, what else do we want to do? Oh yeah, I did the manifest one in a green, but I had black left on my brayer, so it was like a dark green. Love that. Cool. That might be cool on this tag. Yeah, I might do that. I'm just gonna use my scissors, cause why not? And when I'm trimming the paper down to have like a standard size print, like when I printed this guy, I cut my paper down and I had these strips of paper left over. I kept them, cause I was like, oh, I could print on my little stamps with that. So keep your scraps, another tip. Smidge. I like it. Just a smidge. Could be cool. Am I struggling to keep it in there? Um, it's my <laughs> fault. I had it way zoomed in for something else. For trying to get all the color balances and everything. And you know, I didn't know I was going to make this today, but I'm, I'm liking where it's going. I'm just going just gonna to glue that down really fast. If I can get this yes paste open. Oh. <laughs> I love this stuff. It's so good. And a little bit goes a long way. I'm just gonna scrape this on there. So do we have any questions about printmaking that you guys want me to answer? Um, Debbie Lavender says, please let Jesse know how much I like her earrings. Oh, thanks. They're made by a local girl. Um, and I kept the tag in my pocket. What is it? Her name is? Angie Doyle. Am I close? Daisy and P. I got it at a store here um, in Missouri. That's super cute. She's a young girl and she's using the money to save up for stuff for school. So I was like, well, those are cute earrings. I'm going to need those. Should I put it down there? No, I like it up there. Also, there's someone named Duke Claw, great name, who says, sorry, a little late, but watching from Alaska. Yeah. Hello. I think that's Jody. Do you clean off the stamps and not leave paint on them? Yes, I do clean them, but since I'm in here <laughs> and I'm not nearby a sink, I'll, I'll, I'll do my dishes later. So I'm gonna put that over there. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so when you're messing around with the white paint or white ink or whatever, um, you can embellish more. So like, I kind of like that, um, that my stamp had that kind of extra stuff happening like around the edges like it is on this one mm -hmm. and so i'm like let's go with that because i feel like it's manifesting some good vibes like radiating like awesomeness so i'm just gonna come in here with my who doesn't like that right like awesome vibes right this is all about good vibes uh jody duclaw also says can you do these on fabric yes and there is a separate kind of um ink that you can use on fabric and I've been wanting to do that, so 
um, stay tuned or like look at my Instagram or something because I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with that. I just ordered some. Kayla says she just finished her tub of yes paste after two years. Oh my gosh, I love hearing that. Like I have a tub like here and there and everywhere. So I think I have like three half ones, but that just means that you've been making so much art and yeah. making so much time for art in your life. And I'm so proud of you. That's so Those good. Those tubs are huge. That's an accomplishment. And they go a long way. So it really is. Okay, Allison wants to know if she could use acrylic paint on her stamps. She can make some cool prints on her jelly plate. Um, I haven't, like, so, this is a good question. The stamp itself, because it feels kind of like an eraser, is a little bit, like, porous. And when you put acrylic ink on it, it's almost like it seals it. Mm. And I don't get as good a print from it. Cause I tried, cause I tried, cause you know, we had a brayer with the jelly plate that's a little bit different than this. And this soft br brayer, that's like a rubber. And this combo with this ink really does give you a really good print. But if you wanted to take your stamp and like put it in wet acrylic, like on your jelly plate and peel it off and just make sure you wash it really quickly. Um, maybe it wouldn't like seal the rubber as much, but I just say, if you had an idea, Experiment. Go for it. Those are just my thoughts. Sweet. We got. I mean, we got a lot of uh, interaction here. We got more questions. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, do you have a tutorial on how to carve out the stamps from Paula? Yes. Thank you for asking. So I developed a whole course on um, let's with Let's Make Art called Good Vibes, and it comes with the cutter, which I don't have right here because I wasn't planning on cutting. But a stamp. it's cool. It's, Imagine a cool cutter. It's it's somewhere. It's got a handle with um, blades that are ex you can change out for different um, types of cutting. So there's like a V and a U gouge. Anyway, I take you from the very beginning, like you've never even done art before kind of thing in that course. And we do lots of warm ups and we make, the first thing we made was this cute little mushroom where I demo all the different kind of ways you can stamp with, which was really fun. Um, and then we get into more complicated things and then we make these projects. So we did this project. Oh, wait, 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 oh. sorry. Now this show project, it. this project, there we go. And this one. So I'm so glad you asked. And there are some of those, um, course kits still available and the education comes along with the course when you buy it. Cool. Cool. Thank you for asking. You're very welcome. We have more questions. Let's uh, hear it. Are there different types of brayers for different types of paints? Yes. So the jelly plate brayer is really great with acrylic. This is really great with ink. And what's another cool thing that I don't know if you guys know about my, this is going to be, hold on. These brayers pop out for them to clean easily. So they just pop out and Speedball even has some that you can pop in different types of brayers for different things. I'm just going to pop this back in because I don't know where I'm going to set it down otherwise. And that's another tip that I say a lot is just set your brayer down like this. Don't put it down the other way because you don't want to damage the soft rubber on your brayer and having it stick to stuff and whatnot. So yes, they have um, a brayer that pops in and out with different types of brayers. Good question. Thanks for asking. Uh, if ink dries, can you add water to bring it back? Um, I wouldn't recommend like reconstituting this to do it again. Um, if you're kind of in between printing, um, you can put another like ink layer over it. Cause if it's just like a little sticky or damp, like you can keep adding to it, that's fine. But if it's completely dry, adding water to this doesn't give you the same results as using it straight out of here. But it's not wasted because you can still use it if you add water to it like this. Oops, sorry, let me get this where you can see top can really fast there we go and you can um still use it so let's let's just add a little white to this you know in some places you can still use that paint it's almost like it's not like acrylic because if you touch it again it'll reconstitute it's it's more like gouache i guess but Sweet. not as thick 
<laughs> I've also just been informed that Posca pens are 25% off on our site till Saturday, so oh, I probably what? will have to go restock my touch-up paint drawer with new Posca pens. Yes, you do. And I just think they help so much with layering. I'm just gonna dry this really fast and then figure out. I have a bunch of half-made tags that I was like, we could keep layering on that or we could do other things. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't have an agenda. Karen said, putting the brayer up was the best advice. I'm so glad that helped. And they even have these little um, holes in the top. So if you like to store your brayers, um, like where you could see them, I'm definitely like, I need to see my art supplies. They can't be hidden in a drawer. I'll forget I have them. And, or at least I have that fear. So I leave everything out all the time, <laughs> which can be problematic. But anyway, this is great. If you can get a hook to, to hook, hook them on and then hang them up so you can see them. I like doing that. Um, is carving with a heavy hand a bad thing? Susan says that she has a heavy hand. What's that say again? Like if you're carving and you're a little heavy handed, is mm -hmm. it bad? Well, no, I think you just make like, if you're kind of light, let's see. Let me see if I can find an example. Um, okay. So I kind of let these edges be there on this one, the top cam. Sorry. And you can see it here. <laughs> I think I was more heavy handed on the middle kind of channels. So that just means the raised part, which is going to take the ink, um, is going to be even more raised, which just gives you more contrast and less of this like leftover -y kind of things around. But as long as you don't like cut all the way through this material, I don't see that as a problem. Yeah. You might get fatigue over time. So like that's something to consider. So I would just say like, Take a deep breath. Be aware of your body. Like if you're heavy handed because you're like nervous, like that's not necessary. But if you just really, it feels really good to you and you're not getting fatigued and you're getting the results you want, I don't think that's a problem. Good question. I love when you guys ask stuff like this because I know somebody else is probably thinking it. Don't think to ask. Let's see. Oh, Carrie says, I've been drawing designs on my plain terracotta planters with Posca pins to jazz them up. I love that. I have never done that. That's such a cute idea. And it's spring. So yeah, if Posca pins are on sale, you can grab some to decorate your pots with. I love that. Hmm. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Jesse. Okay. I want to. Jesse's teaching a live workshop in Sedona, Arizona this summer. Yes, oh, I am. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's going to be so fun. Well, I just love creating and I love when I have an opportunity to be in person with our friends. It's not super often, but every now and then there's an opportunity there. Let's see. What else do I want to do with this? No. You, um, in the tutorials, you did it on different kinds of paper, like Sumi. Do you have anything like that with us? Yes, I do. I do. Is that a question from a friend or are you asking? That's just, that was for me. Yeah, so this paper right here, so we can we can stamp on that here in a minute. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. If I want to finish a tag for this, if I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I think I want to add this to that really fast, and then I'll, I'll demo some other paper. It's just that my brayers are dirty now. I think I might have one more brayer left for that. So, okay. Let's see. Give me yes paste. Where is it at? There it is. Um, I have all of these little, these little sentiments. So for my friends who are just finding out about this box, I design collage paper and I like including all these little fun things that you can use in your layering and mixed media. So here's what some of that paper looks like. So we got some fun pattern backgrounds. This is fun to print right on mm -hmm. top of. Cool. And you know, we got some other little ephemera and whatnot. I tried to give you ephemera, back, things to cut out, and then backgrounds to print on that were fun. So those are all in the collage paper I designed. And this one that says happiness comes in waves, I think is awesome. Let me use that one. I haven't used this one on anything yet that I remember. I just love working in a theme, as y'all know. And this good vibes theme has just been so uplifting. And it's helped me with my inner critic. And it's helped me think of 
of ways I could share good vibes with others and I've been having a lot of fun creating these tags. And some of the meditation practices that I have used are all about like, just like taking a deep breath and imagining like good vibes for someone like you love, like sending out peace and happiness and good vibes to someone you love. And then even like somebody you don't know as well, imagining a coworker or a friend like that you're just getting to know and sending them good vibes. Like, I feel like it's so good for us to get so outside of our life or our self and just imagining sending good vibes to others because it just kind of trips up like you know the habit that we're in in our daily life and helps us to respond to people in a different way and I know when I make art that I do I respond to those around me differently I'm happier I'm calmer I'm more aware of the little things and that's what I love making art because it just like helps me feel like I'm in the moment more often and not like in the ruminating worry, anxiety, what's, you know, what I got to make for dinner later, like, you know, all of those things. So I just feel like the good vibe theme is just cool because we can make art for ourselves, but we can make stuff like this and leave it at a restaurant for, you know, the awesome waitress at the pizza place. There you go. Or, you know, whatever. Uh, so I don't know. I just, my brain went there. That's, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Oh, I wanted to say that I love this little guy right here. I have on a tag that I created. I'm gonna cut it out. The other nice thing is if you like have the kit, right? And you've mm -hmm. got the carver, you can make infinite stamps. You can buy new packs of stamps all the time and just like keep going with the same carver, right? Oh yeah, so the speedy carve blocks um, that are blank, they come, here, let me grab one. These are what I recommend because they're the easiest to carve on and I tried a whole bunch of different ones. And um, yeah. These are on Let's Make Art, yeah. Yeah, this is what came in the kit and I was like, y'all are gonna want more of these. <laughs> so I think that they're restocked. I don't know for sure, you might wanna check in with our Let's Make Art friends. But yeah, it would be great to have more of those on hands because once you start doing it, it's kind of addictive, it's so, I don't know. I love having a project that I'm working on. Like this one was more intricate and um, I think oh, yeah. I was on the phone with some some friends when I was making this and we were just chatting, like doing art and like hanging out and it was so relaxing to make. And then <laughs> then I forgot I made it because that was like a Friday night. And then I was in my studio. And I was like, oh, I have a I have one to make. I have it pulled the print from yet it was like Christmas I was just like oh my gosh I can I get to make this print like after all that work that I forgot that I even did um so I just I love the process it's like you know when you're reading a book and you really love the characters yeah and you don't want to get to the end because then you're like done um sometimes I'm like I don't want to be done I really like the carving process but then it's so fun because you can use it over and over and over so all that work which some of them aren't as much work as others um, really leads to some more fun later on where you're just playing around. So this long yap, I just wanted to show you, like take it a step further. Like we did lots of prints in black and gold in, in the projects, but you know, mixing the paint is fun, trying, you know, the opposite contrast. So black on white is great, but white on another color is great. Um, and whenever you're doing words, you have to consider that it's gonna print mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to show you my fail because we're not going to be good at everything right when we start it, right? Like, I feel like we all want to be, like, amazing at something right when we start it. That feels like, you know, like, would be cool. But I was working on this while I was talking to a friend. We were making art together. I was teaching her how to make a stamp. And she looked over and Haley was like, um, do you want that to be backwards? <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> but I was distracted because we were just hanging out. So, you know, that happens and it's okay because these aren't very expensive and you can buy more and you can just keep on going, keep having fun. I'm, I think I should finish carving it just so it's like a backwards design or something. Listen, as a, my semi-professional opinion, if you do that, just claim it and be like, you don't understand art, whoever you are criticizing yeah. it. I did this backwards on purpose. Yeah, because then, you know, <laughs> you can stamp your mirror with it. There you go, yeah. <laughs> and I think all you need is love is a really great thing to have in your mirror. Yeah. Right, if you stamp your mirror, then it would be backwards, right? Or would it? 
I think it'd be the same. Dang it. I was trying. I was trying. You gotta stamp the back of your paper with black ink and then it'll come through kind of semi see through in yeah. the right direction. Yeah. Well, there we have it. Now we're talking about mirror messages, which some of these <laughs> like manifest things could be really, really cool too. Yeah, they said print it on translucent paper like vellum. And yes. then it would be kind of cool and mystique. Ooh, mystique. I like it. Foggy. Yeah. Like, you Halloween. know. Um, like a message coming through the mirror, but not all the way. Okay, so this is a throwback technique that I wanted to do from the very first tutorial that I did, or the first box that I did. I don't know if it's the first tutorial. Um, I just had fun doing these little dots around the edges. We did like, um, let's see, we did a picture of ourselves that we did like what makes me happy and we did some decorations around that. And I just had to bring it back, I had to bring it back. I wanna cut this a little bit more straight because I cut this with scissors and it's gonna make me crazy. If it doesn't make you crazy, then don't worry about it. You do you, but I'm just gonna trim this to be square. It's have to be a square. I just wanted to do this, especially since Posca pins are on sale, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're the best. I need to get some more. And then, yeah, we might have a minute for a few more questions and then we're gonna... I think I'm gonna name my next child Posca. Posca Cray. Oh, Posca. because I love the pen so much. Wow. Now well, that's a, that's a commitment. <laughs> I love clementines, so. Yeah, yeah, so you have a clementine. Tangerine, as we call her. I know, she does not like that. She is that very literal <laughs> four-year-old, that's not my name. She doesn't appreciate your jokes at all. Listen, that was a Keenan joke. We just all piled on. Yeah, it's true. Keenan did call her tangerine. Uh, he still does every time he sees her. And she just spurrows her brow. <laughs> which is exactly the response he wants. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna get lost in the dots here for a minute. I'm not worried about spacing them out perfectly, but you know, just a little running dot, just, just for fun, finish the edge of this, why not? Oh, Sharon says, I use my backwards word mistakes on transparent paper, I love mm -hmm. that. I need to go back over some of these. It wasn't quite opaque enough for me. There we go. I mean, this is such a simple thing, but I just get so much joy out of it that I just had to do it really fast. I think this will be a good one to put on a tag and leave behind in a restaurant. So maybe I'll do that this weekend. So yeah, then you can just go in the middle of the white dots with another color. I chose orange. And if you've been hanging out with us for a while, then you might already have this Posca pin in your stash. Possibly. Someone said I might need to ask Sarah about naming my child Posca. Oh, well, <laughs> she likes your choices, right? We'll sneak it in. We'll sneak it in it. We'll just write it on the birth certificate when she's not looking. Hmm. Okay, so some of them weren't spaced out as exact as whatever. I like it though. I think it's cool. It's beautiful. Okay, one other way of embellishing with Posca pen that I like is, okay, so I used up my extra paint uh, for my brayer and just rolled it on. And then I use my Posca pen to do a little quote. Choose only the best for yourself. Let your courage rise above your fears. Good things are coming your way. Love it. Sometimes I love just writing stuff like that in my journal and then I paint over it and make a thing. But that's how I start out just to get myself like, you know, warmed up. So that's fun. But this is also a fun one to just like layer stuff on top. I might be a little busy, but like, you know, whatever. That's cool. And then the backgrounds on these, I just use like, the paint and the brush and I just brushed on that gold in the background and then I wrote a little something about manifesting I don't remember I wrote but it was it was cool and you know just put a couple of extra little embellishments on there so those are other thoughts and ideas about that and why not let's do this really fast I'm sorry my questions are making us you know, go ahead, but I like can you questions. use Posca pens on glass I haven't tried that 
I don't know. I, I think you could, but I don't think it would be like dishwasher safe. Okay, yeah. That checks out. It'd probably like scratch off, but it would look good if it wasn't getting like any friction, I would think. I don't know. I know it's a very specific use case, but I use it on uh, guitars that get little chips. So I just like kind of paint the chip on the guitar. Oh yeah? Yeah. So this is a water soluble distress watercolor pencil. And I just thought I wanted a little pop of color in here and I wanted to see what this would do because I've just been really excited about this set. I don't remember what set this is. Whoa, I just, set number three, in case you were wondering. I just thought I could just try this out in some spots. You know, I just like messy layers. This is not done. There's, it just needs some more stuff happening. Now you could leave it like that where you have kind of, well, the reason I like this is because you can get that scratchy kind of pencil look, but you can also get the painterly look with the same color after you wet it. Now, just remember, this is not acrylic under there. That ink is water soluble. So if you get it wet, it's gonna do things too. So like, let's go over here where I get the yellow wet and then I bump into the ink and then you're gonna get those guys mixing, which is cool if that's what you're going for. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, then I'm mixing the green that's on my brush into that. So lots of fun layering opportunities. I just love how bold that color is. What color is this? Crushed olive. <laughs> I like it. Great naming. Oh yeah. Uh, I love how Ranger names all of their things. They're always so good. I love that naming of nail polish too. I get such a kick out of those little puns every time. I don't know if that just, <laughs> what that says about me, but like this polish is called Buff and Tumble. Hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. Let me dry this really fast. Oh, hi Lori, I see you. Lori George has done some acrylic boxes for Let's Make Art and they're awesome. So if you like acrylic, you can check those out too. Hi Lori George. remembering my own advice to lift this up so that air can go through and dry a little quicker. Yo, we made something. We took a little bit of time and we got together and we made art. I think that is winning. Do you have any other questions that I didn't answer that would be good to leave on? Um, not, not that I've seen. Okay. Uh, just the glass, the glass Posca pen question. Um, Believer72 just came in and was asking how you did the green background. One, this video gets posted after it's done, so you watch yes. all again. And two, it was with either a uh, paint knife or the brayer. Oh, good job. Michael knows all the things. Thank so yeah, you. this one was like the brayer leftover, and then this one was just scraped on. And then, yeah, that was scraped on too. Yeah, okay, so I saw a little, okay, Allison said, oh, I like the leave the tag somewhere idea. I should pop some in my neighborhood, little free library. They'd be great bookmarks. Yes, that was such a good idea. I'm always needing the bookmark. I have more books in different spots in my house that I read when I'm sitting in that chair only, or if it's, I have a couple different ones on by my bed. Does anybody else have multiple books they read at the same time? Are you a one book person at a time or are you multiple? Michael? Sometimes I accidentally get sucked into a very boring book and I like, kind of read a fun one on the side <laughs> to get myself through the board. <laughs> yeah, so I'll have nonfiction books where I'm learning like art techniques. I like always have to have a fiction book that's just like an escape. And then, yeah, a couple other different books. So depending on my mood. I and try to be book monogamous and stay with one book. You know? I like that. I, I like that for you. <laughs> I can respect that. Yeah, so my needing all these books means I need multiple bookmarks. <laughs> so that's a great idea. And I feel like if you have a friend that's not book, Monogamous, is that what you said? Yeah, book um, monogamous. Book monogamous. Yeah, he mixed them together. My brain was having a hard time saying that. Book monogamous. I got it. <laughs> um, yeah, so bookmark idea. I love that. Allison, thank you for sharing that. Okay, before we start wrapping up, mm -hmm. uh, how would you seal something like this? <gasps> yes, I'm. S you are coming in clutch. All right, so if you made the Let's Make Art Matter postcard with us, um, or you're planning on doing that, and you're worried about sending it in the mail because we 
have tested this and we've shown that if you get it wet again, it runs, then you're gonna wanna use the fabulous Dorland's wax. Mm -hmm. It needs to be dry for you to do that. So I need to choose one that I have not worked on today. We'll do this guy. That wax is amazing. We have a painting by our sink, which gets steam and splashes, and it's just waxed, nothing else. It's not behind glass? No. And it, it's on watercolor paper, and it's, it looks just like the day it was new. So the first time I saw this demoed um, was at Jacquard's like booth at like an art thing. And they were like, this is my wife's watercolor and I'm gonna show you how you can seal it. And I was like, oh, like what are you doing? Like he's just like about Smear to start it smearing it. I was like, oh, how the hell did you do that? Like, but it's awesome. Okay, so I'm just, you have a cloth, you can use a cloth. I just have this paper towel and you just rub it on. See, and don't be scared because look, it didn't move because this is cold wax. It freaks me out and I've seen it half, I've seen it like done a bunch of times, you know, it still freaks me out to see. I tested it on some red and I saw like a little bleed on my cloth, but not on the paper. So I, it just like picked up a titch of pigment, but it didn't smear anything. This is gonna be a cute little bookmark. It's got my initials. I was just trying to use up like a little tiny stamp and like a little bit of let this leftover guy. <laughs> I need that. Yeah, so you just rub it on and then just kind of Is smear your initials it out. so Jesse Lamar? Peterson? Yeah, Lamar. Lamar, no. no. LaFons? Lois. Lois. Oh, should have known. Should have guessed. Yep. By the babies. We're both named after my great grandma. Good. Who was a spectacular lady. Okay, so that is with the. One more time, I missed the name of it. What is it? This? Yes. Dorland's Wax Medium. And Dorland's it, wax. I kind of like the little size because I can take it with me. Uh, I use this in my journal because if I have a lot, a lot of sticky stuff that's happening in my journal and I close the pages, mm -hmm. then the pages stick together, which is not my favorite because it might pull the paint from one side to the other. So I use these on my journal pages to keep them from sticking. So it's really great for art journals, art journaling and really great for postcards that you're sending in the mail or anything else that you think is gonna get handled a lot and you're worried about it. A bookmark is also great. And it comes in this little size that I like, but also comes in this bigger guy as well. So. If you're a wax addict. Yeah, cold wax, I think is what it is. All right. Possibly. Y'all, yeah. so good to hang out and so glad that we made time to make art together. This is what we made today, but then I dabbled in lots of other things, so I don't even know what to show up, show, hold up. Um, if you made something with us, I love seeing what you made. And if you share it with somebody else, and I wanna see that too. So you can um, use the hashtag on Instagram, let's make art journals. You can hashtag me, Jesse Peterson Art. You can share it on the Facebook group. Um, just get it out there, share the good vibes. Thanks for creating with us. It's so fun to be with you. Bye.